morning, everyone. Our opening hymn is Seek Ye First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah, In the name of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate the Feast of St. Peter Claver, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made St. Peter Claver a slave of slaves, and strengthened him with the wonderful charity and patience as he came to their help, granted through his intercession that seeking the things of Jesus Christ, we may love our neighbor in deeds and in truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, in regard to virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord, but I give my opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. So this is what I think best because of the present distress. That it is a good thing for a person to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek a separation. Are you free of a wife? Then do, do not look for a wife. If you marry, however, you do not sin, nor does an unmarried woman sin if she marries. But such people will experience affliction in their earthly life, and I would like to spare you that. I tell you, brothers, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. The response are all psalm. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend Hear, O daughter, and see, turn your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. So, so shall the kings desire your beauty, for he is your Lord, and you must worship him. Listen to All glorious is the king's daughter as she enters. Her raiment is threaded with spun gold. In embroider, embroidered apparel, she is borne in to the king. Behind her, the virgins of her train are brought to you daughter, see and bend your ear. They are born in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The place of your fathers your sons shall have. You shall make them princes through all the land. Listen to me. Alleluia, 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 
joy. Your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Raising his eyes toward his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled, now filled, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. On the first reading, Paul has nothing against marriage. The second coming is going to take place, so focus on the, it's going to take place soon, so focus on the afterlife. Don't worry about earthly things. But if you took the scripture study last spring, you would have known that because we discussed Paul. But today we celebrate the Feast of St. Peter Claver. He was born in Spain, joined the Jesuits, and was uh, stationed in Bolivia. And he became the pastor to a great group of slaves. And he fell so enamored in, 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 with, so fell in love with them that he became known as the slave to the slaves. And when he died, he was canonized because of his ministry to the slaves in Bolivia. To this day, the African-American community really thinks highly of Peter Claver. In fact, when black African-Americans were not allowed to join the Knights of Columbus because they were black, they created their own society called the Society of St. Peter Claver in answer to the, um, to the Knights of Columbus. Now that's, thank God, that has all changed, but you will see very few African-Americans of the Knights of Columbus because of that. People who are much older will remember that. And what it did was is that it gave the African Americans at the time a sense of belonging in the church. Even though they couldn't join the Knights of Columbus, they could have their own society and do the same work as the Knights of Columbus did. Now both, I'm not deriding the Knights of Columbus, but that was the culture of the day. And fortunately, the Knights of Columbus have changed for the better, and it's still a great organization. But I think it goes to the day's gospel. How do we treat our brothers and sisters? St. Luke is a takeoff on the, on the Beatitudes that we see in Matthew 5. How do we treat each other? How do we treat our brothers and sisters? Do we treat everyone with respect? Do we bring up the lowly? Do we give, give alms to the poor? Do we, do we treat each other with respect? And that's what the gospel challenges today to treat each other with respect. The Knights, uh, the Knights of Columbus and the St. Saint, Saint Peter Claver Knights are a wonderful organization. May they continue to do good work, but may we as a society realize that we are all brothers and sisters in the Lord and we are treated, treat each other with love, respect as children of God. for all his people and sees in us our need. Let us bring our petitions before him.
For the church leaders, may God continue to conform them to himself, empowering them for a wisdom with a wisdom that is not their own. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected and appointed leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in the efforts to protect the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sorrowful, hungry, or cast out, may God provide hope and healing and relieve them of their burdens. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may the sacrament we receive help us grow in holiness and goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may the Lord bring them to his everlasting joy this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we especially pray for John Collins, Jeff Miller, and Anita, and Brian Almasida, Alameda. May they share eternal life with the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God, hear the prayers we bring you today, and please answer them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Offertory hymn is We Have Been Told. We have been told, we've seen his face and heard his voice alive in our hearts. Live in my love with all your heart as the Father loved me, so I have loved you. I am the vine, you are the branches, and all who live in me will bear great fruit. We have been told, we've seen his face, and heard his voice alive in our hearts. Live in my love with all your heart. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of St. Peter Claver, be confirmed in love of you and our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and ever give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the, on the festival of St. Peter Claver, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, and what end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer your Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ together to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from our evil, Grace grant peace in our days, that by the help of mercy be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as so we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace to grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, they should enter to my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
For those who cannot be present, we offer this spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is Be Not Afraid. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. If you pass through raging waters, in the sea you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, know that I am with you through it all. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people and grant that we, who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity, may by the example of St. Peter Claver be confirmed in love 
of you and of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Our closing hymn is They'll Know We Are Christians by Our Love. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Please join us for rosary in Mary's garden if it's not raining. If it is raining, please come to the rectory porch. Have a beautiful day, everyone. <laughs>